go through. No, oh, I'm going to go through this uh, slides uh, as rapidly as I can because I have a lot of them. So if you have a question, could you please hold it to the end for a comment? And unless your question relates to something I just showed that, that you didn't understand. If, if that's the case, then please interrupt me. Okay, this is a, a repeat presentation. Uh, I gave it first in 2012 and then again in 2017. What? Um, okay. There are about 600,000 bridges in the United States. And uh, and that includes overpasses because overpasses are by definition bridges. Uh, the picture here shows um, the Owakshoma Natural Bridge, which is in Utah. And I'm not going to be talking about natural bridges, but I just wanted to show uh, what that looks like. Uh, the bridge in the lower right is the Hangzhou Bay Bridge in China. And in the upper right is just a, an overpass uh, because overpasses are bridges. So how do we define a bridge? It's a structure built to span a physical obstacle, such as a body of water, a valley, a road. And the purpose is to provide passage over the obstacle. And for that reason, uh, things like uh, tramways um, and cable cars are really not bridges. Uh, the passage, what we're putting over the bridge could be people, uh, vehicles like cars, buses, trucks, airplanes, <clears throat> railroads. Could also be water or sewer lines, power lines, or animals. <clears throat> so where do we build bridges? Well, the, the upper left is a picture of a bridge at the Grand Canyon. Well, it's kind of the entrance to the Grand Canyon, so it's not the, uh, the major part of the Grand Canyon. Um, the lower left shows that we're building a bridge uh, from the mainland to an island. Uh, the upper right is the Brooklyn Bridge, which is crossing the East River in New York City. And the lower right, I don't even remember where I got that picture from, but it looks like there's definitely a need for bridge to join these two uh, sections of highway. Now, there are times in our history when a bridge might have come in very handy. Uh, this is the 1851 uh, oil on canvas painting uh, by the German American artist, uh, Emmanuel Lutz. Uh, and this is uh, Washington and his, uh, his army in boats uh, on Christmas night, uh, heading across the Delaware River. And this was their first move in a surprise attack. Uh, in 1831 in New Jersey, they passed the law that provided for a bridge near uh, where Washington crossed the Delaware. It was a timber bridge. Uh, it was uh, finished and opened in 1834 uh, and a flood destroyed it just seven years later. Um, they rebuilt the bridge and that lasted from 1841 to 1903 when it was wiped out by another flood. Uh, the steel truss bridge that's shown in the picture, uh, or most of it's shown in the picture, uh, 
It was opened in 1904 and severely damaged in 1955 by yet another flood. Uh, a lot of it was rebuilt and it was reopened uh, shortly after the flood, after they can, can Completed all the um, all that work. So why do we build bridges? Uh, to transport people, vehicles, water cables, and, and other things uh, across rivers, bays, inlets, fjords, valleys, gorges, culverts, roads, railroads, all kinds of things, um, and really just to get to the other side, even if you're not a chicken. Um, the first bridges were log bridges. Uh, and this is taken from the first King Kong movie. Uh, and you can see here that uh, a bridge is only as reliable as its supports. Uh, and if you remember from the movie, these guys fall off the bridge when, uh, when he picks it up. There's another reason we build bridges, and that's to provide a platform for bungee jumpers. Uh, this is in Norway, and Judy and I took this picture uh, as we were on our way up to this uh, power plant. Um, yeah, um, so that's, that's another use of, of bridges. So, for the various functions of bridges, they, they actually bring people together. They facilitate commerce and growth. They definitely reduce travel time. And there are lots of examples of that, of where be, until the bridge is, is built, people go down mountains and uh, travel maybe hundreds of miles and up another mountain. Um, but the bridge really is a shortcut in that sense. Um, they make statements. People take pride in their bridges. And so uh, when bridges are required someplace, uh, sometimes they even put it to a public uh, vote as to what kind of bridge should be built there. Um, and that was hap and that happened uh, in New York State when the new bridge at the Tappan Z was built. Uh, they did a, a survey of local people and they said build a uh, an, an arch bridge a, a, a cable stay bridge and that's what was built uh, bridges entice tourists they're, they're people who come just to see the bridge and in in new york without the bridges we couldn't really have the five borough marathon because the uh, marathon uh, goes to all five boroughs, so it has to go over bridges. And that's a picture of the uh, Tappan Zee Bridge in the 1918 marathon. And you can see that there are thousands of runners. Okay. So how do we classify bridges? Well, <clears throat> one way that's very common is by construction type. And I'll get into that in a lot more detail. Um, another way is uh, what, what's the traffic there? So there are uh, highway bridges, railroad bridges, pedestrian bridges. Uh, another way is when it was built. Um, and that's interesting too, this I'll show you um, some very old bridges. Uh, by the material used, it's a steel bridge, it's concrete bridge, timber bridge and so on. Uh, then by size and by location. Uh, and a lot of bridges get named right, right by the location or by some famous person from that area. Now the construction types are uh, they're fixed bridges that bridges don't move or mostly don't move, some of them wobble. Uh, and then they're draw bridges, which are, are movable bridges. They can either rest on the ground or rest on the water uh, as, as pontoon bridges. 
They can be open bridges or covered bridges. They can have a single uh, level for transport or multiple levels. So in terms of the construction types for open bridges, and we're not really gonna talk about closed bridges. Uh, these are the eight basic uh, types. Uh, the truss bridge, uh, okay. The truss bridge, which is made up of, uh, of these uh, beams and, and, and vertical columns, uh, and they all formed its triangles. Um, there's the cantilever bridge, which means they build the tower and then they build the bridge out in both directions from the tower. Uh, suspension bridges, which are usually considered the uh, most attractive. And also they're the strongest. Um, cable stayed bridges, which go way back hundreds of years, but uh, became very popular uh, in the last century. Arch bridges. Uh, originally built from stone and then from steel. Beam bridges are really the oldest and the simplest and the cheapest to build. And then in addition to the arch bridge, there's the tied arch bridge where the arch is above the roadway instead of below it. And then there are hybrid bridges uh, that have different sections made up of, of any one of these various uh, construction types. So breaking the bridge up into horizontal uh, sections, you start with the foundation. And this is uh, made up of piles, these piles. Uh, they're driven into the ground and uh, deep enough to hit something solid, rock or uh, highly compressed soil. Uh, then above that is the substructure and those are the, these are piers. And the piers actually hold up uh, the road or roadway. And they also hold up a superstructure if it has one. And of course, not all bridges have superstructures. So we're gonna talk about each of the types of bridges independently. Uh, but this is the bridge parts. Uh, and in, in this in particular is showing an arch bridge. So that's the superstructure. Uh, uh, there are abutments, and depending on the type of the bridge, the abutment could be very important because it, it could have a lot of the load of the bridge transferred to it. Uh, so here are the piles, the pile caps, uh, the piers and the pier caps. This is the deck or the decking. And this uh, section is just the girder bridge. It's essentially a beam bridge. Uh, girders are essentially very heavy beams. Uh, I'm going to read you this quote. Why do we have pretty bridges, or bridges a lot of people consider pretty? Granting that human happiness is greatly enhanced by beautiful and pleasing surroundings, it is highly desirable that utilitarian structures, such as bridges, should be as pleasing to the eye as it is practical to make them, and that there should be greater collaboration between the architect and the engineer with a realization on the part of each that science without art is apt to be unattractive and art with sci without science inefficient. And that was written in 1927 by Wilbur Watson, who was a civil engineer and very prominent uh, for designing and building bridges in his, his lifetime. So classification by use. Well, automobiles, including uh, trucks and buses and so on, railroads, streetcars. And here's a picture of the Manhattan Bridge in New York City from Brooklyn uh, to Queens and streetcars going over the bridge and here's a regular car who has to avoid the streetcars. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, New York bridges. Uh, it could be a bicycle bridge, a pedestrian bridge, 
uh, it could be for horse and wagons. And a lot of the covered bridges that were built were for that purpose. Uh, sometimes water lines go over bridges, cables, sewage can go over a bridge. And they're bridges that are just for animals, not for people at all. And again, overpasses are bridges. So what about classifying them by the materials that we use to construct them? Well, the first ones were logs, uh, then stones, bricks, rope, uh, and, and rope-like uh, materials made from uh, vines and, and other uh, plant material, uh, wood, concrete, iron, steel, and composites. Uh, and so those are all the different uh, materials that, that can be used to make bridges. Uh, so here are the basic forces on the bridges. And the reason to talk about the forces is because you have to understand what those things are if you're going to talk about building a bridge. So the first one is tension. Those are forces trying to pull something apart. Uh, compression of forces trying to squeeze something together. Shear forces are trying to rip things across uh, sideways. Uh, so there's a force on one end of the object one way and on the other end the other way, and then there's torsion. And I didn't like the picture I made up of torsion, so I got this off the internet. And so that's where one end is fixed and there's a twisting on the other end, or both ends are being twisted, but in opposite directions. So those are the four main forces. And the forces are caused by, first of all, the weight of the structure. If you don't put anything on it, it still has to hold itself up. Uh, the weight of the payload, which especially in things like railroad bridges can be considerable. Uh, the wind uh, puts forces on the bridges. Uh, water and ice, and we'll show you some example of that. And then there are earthquakes that makes the ground move. And that causes uh, catastrophic forces sometimes on bridges. So we're not gonna talk about each of that type of bridge, but individually. So the beam bridge is really the oldest and it's the most common bridge form. And so here's a picture of a beam bridge. It's got two piers, uh, the top surface uh, goes into compression as the bridge bends under the weight and the lower level of the structure uh, goes in tension. Uh, if you want to make the beam bridge longer, you put multiple spans uh, because the, the longest practical length for one span is about 250 feet. However, these bridges compared to some of the others are really the weakest bridges, but there are lots and lots of them. <laughs> All right, so the beam bridge uh, deflects under the weight of the payload. And as I said, the bottom goes into tension because it's stretching and the top into compression. Say that backwards. Bottom is tension, right? Okay. So here's what could have been the first bridge, uh, although the walker does not look he's, like he's the first person to cross it. Um, but those those things were probably discovered by the ancients, and someone said, you know what? If we knock the, this particular log down, we would have a bridge. Uh, and this is a modern log bridge. It's hard to see what's underneath, but it's a it's, it's beam bridge uh, that they put these side railings on. And these are just, a, it looks like the, uh, 
the the roadway here is just a bunch of logs. They, they, they haven't even been uh, shaved so that the tops of the logs are flat. Okay. And this is also a beam bridge over uh, Lake Pontchartrain uh, near New Orleans. Uh, this is 24 miles long, and it's either it's still the longest, or, or at least it was the longest uh, beam bridge in the world. Um, okay. It has 9,500 concrete pilings. Instance. So there are lots and lots of sections. Uh, I don't remember how many sections there are. Okay. Um, next one's the arch bridge. And the arch bridge can be very beautiful. Uh, the arch is built and then the roadway is built. Uh, and the entire arch goes into compression because the load is pushing down on it. Um, they are structurally uh, sound bridges, uh, but they have a disadvantage uh, in general, it's, it's not so much the steel ones, but when they were building arch bridges initially out of stone, it required a great deal of material. Uh, okay. Now, there are also arch bridges where the arch goes above the roadway. So this is the roadway and, and that kind of a bridge. Um, okay. Uh, it's also critically necessary for an arch bridge uh, to the uh, places where the arch uh, touches the surrounding. Uh, these embankments have got to be strong. So if this is stone, uh, probably it's strong enough, um, but it's, it's critical to hold up the bridge. And all right. So building a stone arch bridge, now remember the, the picture I just showed you was a steel arch bridge. You start, here's a river, and you put some of these stones up and you notice that the top surface is on an angle. And then you build a, a false structure in the middle because otherwise without this false work, you wouldn't have a way to support these other stones. So you build all the other stones, you put one in the center, and now these all touch each other and will hold up the arch. Then, you fill in more material here and here, and those are called spandrels. These are filled spandrels. There's one on that side too. And then you put a roadway on the top. And so that completes a stone arch bridge. Uh, and this gives you an example of a very decorated one where the spandrels are also filled in, but they're filled in uh, by statues in addition to other material. So there's the stone arch bridge with the, uh, these trusses removed. Now here's uh, a bridge, oops, let's go back. Okay, uh, this one, was built probably someplace between 1300 and then 1190 BCE. Uh, it's 22 meters, it's not that, it's 22 meters long. And the span here is a meter. And it's all built from stone. It doesn't look like these are angled stones uh, the way they were in the picture I gave you. Uh, but here's the center stone. And so the whole thing is, is rigid. Uh, and here's a picture of the same thing where you can actually see through it here. So the reason for building this was probably just so uh, passersby did not have to go through this little um, uh, lower level ground. Uh, it's, there may have been water through here at some point, 
uh, but I don't know that. Okay. Uh, this is the Brigadoon uh, in Alloway, Scotland. It was originally put up uh, late medieval times and rebuilt in the 18th century. And it uh, supposedly uh, was what uh, gave the, um, the impetus for a Broadway show, um, Brigadoon, and also for the um, uh, the Tam O'Shanter uh, poem by Robert Burns. So that's a early bridge that, that gave inspiration to the arts. Venice, Venice has many bridges. It has 800 of them and the original bridges were made out of wood. The first stone arch bridge was in the year 1137. And this was after uh, Venice became a commercial uh, center in Italy. And so they needed the bridges uh, to make the maybe 117 uh, islands on which Venice was built uh, accessible one, one, from one island to the next. Uh, those original wooden bridges were so that wagons and horses could get from one island to another. Um, but then it was people and there aren't vehicles in Venice, so you don't need highway bridges within the city. Uh, there are right now 72 private bridges uh, in Venice, so somebody might build one to get to their front door. Um, okay. Um, this is a stone arch bridge built around 1850 in uh, Illinois. Uh, it was built by the pioneers of the Church of the Latter day Saints. Uh, this is the Monroe Street Bridge. Uh, it's an arch bridge. Uh, and you can see the false work here uh, to get this arch together. And here you can see the piers and the roadways being built. Uh, the main arch in the middle, uh, a smaller arch here. And they're building either an arch, uh, maybe they have to do the second half of the arch here. So this will have at least uh, three sections to it uh, when it's completed. And I can take a picture of the, uh, the complete bridge. Okay. Um, this is the New River Gorge Bridge uh, in West Virginia. And when this was put up, it was the longest steel single span arch bridge uh, in the world. And it was the highest vehicular bridge. Uh, it's no longer either of those things, but it was impressive uh, when it was built. And these spandrels you can see are open. Uh, the arch in the middle here is 1700 feet from here to here. Okay. Oops. Start doing it that way. This one I put up just because I thought it was interesting. Uh, it's in Franklin, Tennessee. It was built in 1994, and it's a pedestrian bridge. But the designers apparently uh, thought they would do something a little bit different. Okay, let's talk about truss bridges. Um, so these are all truss, these are all trusses, um, triangles. Uh, the triangle is interesting because you think of the triangle as being strong, but geometric shapes are not strong. They're just geometric shapes. To be strong, it has to be a physical object. And the problem with triangles, although 
there's a load here and it spreads it out um, to the bases. And that's good, but triangles can be very weak at their corners, uh, physical triangles. So, uh, okay. So you put the triangle together, you make it out of these trusses, uh, and you put a whole bunch of them together, uh, including these connectors and these connectors, and you wind up with a, a truss bridge. Uh, and there is, I forget where that is, but you can see this is a very simple shape. These are a lot more complicated shapes of truss bridges, uh, some with, with spans, others with connectors that go all the way from one end to the other. Uh, some are just two simple triangles or, or many triangles. The Park Avenue Railroad Bridge in New York is a truss bridge, but it's a truss bridge that elevates. So it's really a drawbridge. Uh, and one of the nice things about these bridges, they can be constructed uh, with little or no central pier, no, no false work. Uh, so that's a big advantage to those bridges. All right, the next to discuss is the cantilever bridge. And this has more to look, more to do with how it's built than, than really what it looks like. The tower is built and then the bridge uh, structure is built out from it. So it's only supported on one end when it's being built. So you build out this way and this way at the same time. You go as far as you can. And if necessary, you connect the two cantilever structures with a centerpiece. So on this bridge, the top is in tension and the bottom is in compression. Okay. This is a timber cantilever bridge uh, in China. Uh, and so they built these timber supports out, and then they built the roadway above it, and then they built the covering, uh, built in 1740, uh, rebuilt around 2008, and it has a 55 meter span from here across to there. Yeah, and this is 35 meters. Okay. The, first, the fourth bridge was built in 1889, it's a railroad bridge, uh, and it is a cantilever bridge. And so each tower was built, it's three of them, uh, and then it was built out in both directions. And here you can say that, see that they put a centerpiece in. Uh, here's another picture of that bridge. So you can see they have three cantilever sections in the middle, and this is a beam uh, on each end, beam uh, sections. Okay. The uh, Ed Koch Bridge, the Queensboro Bridge in Manhattan, it's almost never called the Ed Koch Bridge. Um, it's the 59th Street Bridge because it attaches to 59th Street in Manhattan, built in 1909, and it's a cantilever bridge. And I had gone over it I don't know, hundreds of times. And until I started studying bridges, I didn't know it was a cantilever bridge. Uh, when I was a child, uh, here on the bridge uh, over Roosevelt Island, there was an elevator uh, big enough to, hand, uh, to carry two automobiles. And the reason for that was there were many hospitals on the bridge and people coming to visit the hospitals, the only way they could get there was from the Queensboro Bridge. Uh, in later years, there's a, uh, a tramway here from Manhattan and up the river here is a bridge from Queens now. So they got rid of that elevator. And I remember that when I was a kid 
because there was also a trolley on this bridge and the trolley stopped here. Okay. All right, the next kind of bridge is the suspension bridge. Uh, in general, a uh, strong bridge uh, and uh, they can be made very, very attractive. Um, and, and we have some of those in New York. Uh, the center span can go anywhere from 2,000, they can't, they're, they're smaller ones, but it can go from 2,000 to 7,000 feet. Uh, we don't have any that are 7,000 feet yet, but we're getting close to that. Um, okay, so here, the suspensions are in tension and the towers are in compression. Um, and the cable, the main cable, are not rigidly attached to the towers. So this is pulling this way on the tower, but this pulls the same amount this way. And that force all goes to the bulkhead here. So these have to be substantial. Um, okay, and th these are strong bridges, but they're also the most expensive to construct. All right, so here's a little cartoon. You start with piles, you put the bulkheads here, you build the towers, and then you run the suspension cable. Then you start dropping these support cables and building the roadway. You finish that in the center span, then you finish it on the side spans, and you have a bridge. This is a suspension bridge uh, built by the Incas around 1500. Uh, and they, they built a lot of these, uh, and they were building these suspension bridges uh, when in Europe, they weren't building suspension bridges yet. Okay. Uh, this is an 1877 uh, engraving of one of the Inca bridges. Uh, you can see they had uh, strong ropes here, and these ropes were holding up the walkway. Okay. Uh, the Manhattan Bridge in 19, was opened in 1909. This is while it was under construction. Uh, you can see they've, they've got the uh, suspension cables up and there are four of them. Uh, and they have all these uh, supporting cables for the roadway. And they're building out from the center tower in the same way uh, you do a cantilever bridge except because this is a suspension bridge, these are not cantilevered. They're supported from the tower and from the suspension cables. Uh, this is the Golden Gate Bridge, which was opened in 1937. And this bridge is being built the same way the Manhattan Bridge was built. And it also has uh, four suspension cables. Um, this bridge, I think a lot more than the Manhattan Bridge uh, is considered a engineering marvel. Uh, although the Manhattan Bridge was impressive when it was built. Um, okay. And this is the Golden Gate Bridge as seen from the side, uh, from just north of Alcatraz. Uh, island. I don't know. I, I we drove over it once or, or more than once. I don't remember. Um, okay. So this bridge uh, is one of the uh, longest one. Uh, the central span uh, is 1,800 feet. So it's not even half a mile. Uh, in New York, we, all, we have a number of suspension bridges, and this is a Throgsneck Bridge 
uh, which was completed um, in 1961. Uh, it had a bomb threat in 1987, which was later deemed a hoax. Uh, a truck with faulty brakes ran into the bridge's toll booths uh, in 1995. And the next day, the same truck ran into the toll booths again. Fortunately, the only person injured was the driver. Okay. This is the Verrazano Narrow Bridge, which was built, uh, uh, opened in 1964. Um, okay. Um, what else did I want to say about that? All right, nothing. Uh, this is uh, its central span is 1,298 meters. Okay. All right, the next kind is cable stayed bridges. Now these bridges are held up as a tower and the cables, instead of going all the way to the other tower, go directly to the uh, roadway surface. So each one of these cables is in tension and uh, it's taking the load of the roadway to the tower. And in this type of bridge, the tower is actually uh, carry all the weight. And it's all brought to them by this cable. And there are two forms for the cables. It can either be a harp form here, where the cables are attached to different places on the tower, or they can all get attached to the same place. And that's a fan um, set up. 1595, uh, Fausto Varanzio uh, built this bridge designed this bridge and, and uh, sought to its construction. Uh, and this is really a suspension bridge here and a cable uh, bridge here. So he used uh, both techniques. And in, for those bridges that use both, uh, they are even more stable than just a, a a cable stayed bridge or a suspension bridge. I stopped doing that. This bridge uh, was built uh, in France, 1839. And you can see that the tower on this side is cable stayed with the cables going under uh, these structures, which hold them down. But in the middle, it's a suspension bridge. So this was one, not like the Brooklyn Bridge where the uh, suspension cables and the, um, and the, uh, and the other cables uh, are in the same place. Here it's got two sections, cables stayed and suspension. This is the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Florida. Uh, built in 1988, and it was one of the first bridges uh, that was cable stayed where the cables went to the center of the bridge instead of to the sides. And so the roadway uh, is supported by these cables, so that roadways can't be levered out from the center of the bridge. And this is the William Natcher Bridge in Indiana. And here you can see the cables do go to the side of the bridge. Now, some people find these beautiful and others find them not so beautiful. But when it's decided to build the cable stayed bridge, the people want to make an impression with the appearance of the bridge. So here's a hybrid bridge that has three sections, two truss sections, and the center section is the tied arch. The arch with the ties coming down from the arch to support the roadway. So here's a nice picture of the Brooklyn Bridge where you can see the suspension cables that actually come down to the roadway in the middle of the center span. But here you can see 
um, the cable ties. So all these are attached uh, to the near the top of of the tower. I think that's a nice picture of the Brooklyn Bridge, and it is looking from Manhattan to Brooklyn. This is a bank building. Okay. Movable bridges. There are two kinds. Uh, they're called bascule bridges. There's the drawbridge. Uh, well, there are two kinds. This is two tier and this is one tier, but they're both drawbridges, both bascule bridges. The uh, tower bridge is a bascule bridge in the middle, and it has two suspension sections on the side. The center is 61 meters, and the whole bridge is 244 meters, and it was opened in 1894. And there's a picture of it with the um, bascules open. There are also swing bridges and lift bridges. And I'll show you some examples. This is the Madison Avenue Bridge. Now, you know, originally I gave this talk in New York, so I took a lot of examples uh, from New York. Uh, this is a bridge uh, on Madison Avenue. It goes from the Bronx to Manhattan. Uh, and this shows it in its open uh, condition. So this whole bridge rotates on this support structure. And only when a boat's coming by that's tall enough to require it to open. This is the Wards Island Bridge. Uh, it's a uh, beam bridge, but it's a vertical lift beam bridge. And this is in France. Uh, this is one of the world's largest uh, vertical lift bridges. It was uh, opened in 2013. It looks very different from, from that. Mm. Okay. A little bit of history. Uh, before the Roman era, before 300 BCE, Europe was building beam bridges and arch bridges. China was building stone arch and stone beam bridges. Asia, they were building cantilever bridges. Greece was building pontoon beam bridges, but, but no road bridges, of course. You know, roads were for wagons. The traffic were pedestrians, horses, and wagons, and all these things. And Egypt, they were building arches, but they weren't putting them on bridges. The Romans built masonry arch bridges, and they also built temporary pile and beam bridges. They developed waterproof concrete. In the Middle Ages, the monks built bridges. They built masonry arch bridges. Some were crude, some were much better than that. In the Renaissance, the bridges were more refined. And in the 18th century, masonry arch bridges were perfected. 1781, the Severn River Bridge uh, in England was an, uh, the first iron bridge. And for the first time, we had bridge engineers. And here's that Severn River Bridge. Uh, in 1781, a 100 foot span. It's had many repairs, but it is still used. In the 19th century, they started using structural iron and then steel. All basic types of bridges were being built. Railroad bridges, however, presented new challenges. And that's because these big, heavy, uh, trains were going over the bridges, whereas uh, before that, you didn't have anything nearly so heavy. Um, many suspension bridges were built, and in the 20th century up until today, uh, the use of automobiles, automobiles led to an explosion in the number of bridges, 
and cable stayed bridges became popular. So I'm gonna show you some pictures of some bridges that I found interesting. Uh, this is the Pont du Gard aqueduct. Uh, Judy, we saw this, didn't we? Uh, yes, this is we did. It was built in the first century uh, BCE. It's uh, stone arch bridges of three levels. And at the very top level is the aqueduct. And this was built because they wanted to carry the water 30 miles. And the design was so precise that the total drop in level is 56 feet over 30 miles. So not even two feet per mile. That's pretty amazing. Um, okay. And that's another picture of it. And it's still standing. So stone is a very good material for building bridges. This is the Rialto Bridge built in 1591. Um, as I, I said before, the first bridges built in Venice were timber bridges, but then they started building these stone arch bridges and they built a whole bunch of those. Uh, this is over the uh, Grand Canal. There are three other bridges over the Grand Canal now. This is in China. It's the Chenyang Wind and Rain Bridge. There are a whole bunch of wind and rain bridges. And you can see uh, this is a beam bridge. And these are the supports here. And they kind of cantilever out from short beams to longer beams. Uh, this was built in 1916. And that's the most famous of the wind and rain bridges. Uh, this is the Perkins Cove uh, Bridge in Ogunquit, Maine, uh, built in 1941. It may be the only uh, double tier uh, drawbridge in, in this country. And uh, this is uh, originally manual, well, I think it's still manually operated. Uh, and so if some boat captain comes along, uh, he blows his whistle and, and some pedestrian, if there is one, uh, opens the bridge for him. Uh, this is a floating bridge. It's on State Road 520 across Lake Washington. It's the longest floating bridge in the world, a mile and a half long. And it's actually held up on pontoons. It's not, it's not a beam bridge on piles. It's a pontoon bridge. This is the Ban Pu Bridge in Seoul, Korea, built in 1982. It is the longest fountain bridge uh, in the world. And you can see there are three lanes of traffic in each direction. This Millennium Bridge was built in 2002 uh, in honor of the Millennium. Goes over the River Tyne. It's a pedestrian and cyclo cyclist bridge. Uh, this is when it's down and people can walk or bike across it. And when they want to raise it, it raises up this way, and then the boats go under both of these uh, arcs. Okay. This one I, I really like. This is built in 2004 uh, in London. Uh, they call it a rolling bridge. It doesn't really roll, but uh, when they want to open it up, which they do noon on Fridays, I don't know if it's open the rest of the week, but when they open it up, it looks like this. And so it goes from this side to this side and people can walk across. Ah, this is a Ferris wheel on a bridge in Tianjin, China. The uh, wheel is 110 meters in diameter. And 
I guess they did that just because they liked the idea of it. Uh, it's really interesting because the support for the Ferris wheel uh, does not appear to also be holding up the bridge. This seems the piles are here. So it's a beam bridge and a big Ferris wheel. This is the Moses Bridge in the Netherlands, uh, which was opened in around 2011. The reason they did this is this is an old fortress over here. And they were afraid that if they built the bridge, that it would take away from the view of the fortress. So they said, all right, we'll build the bridge. And if you go, if you go in this direction or in this direction, any distance, you really can't see the bridge. You could see the people walking across it, but you wouldn't see the bridge. Um, so that satisfied uh, their desire for an invisible bridge. Uh, this is another interesting one. This was built around 2015. Um, it's in Australia, Christmas Island, uh, in a national park. And every year, about 47 million of these red crabs uh, transfer themselves from where they live uh, during the year to where they want to go for their mating season. So the rangers in this park built these barriers, miles of them, so that the crabs would come to this point, and then they built this bridge, and the crabs go over it, and then they come back uh, later in the year. This is an animal bridge in uh, Banff National Park in Canada. Uh, and the problem was, uh, for one thing, the, the, the bears uh, were not producing young the way they used to. Well, that's not what I mean, <laughs> as often as they used to. Uh, and they found that the reason was uh, some of them tried to cross the highway and got killed and others didn't want to. Uh, so they built this and they actually have all kinds of animals go across this bridge. And there are many other animal bridges are built in that park. Um, all right, Bruce, I'm gonna run a little bit more than an hour, but not a lot more, if that's okay. All right. Um, this interested me because I found dozens of pictures of this bridge. And if you look at this picture and this picture, it doesn't appear to be the same bridge. Now, this may be looking in the other direction, but for one thing, in the middle of the span, this doesn't look as deep as this to me, but I don't know. They were both listed. Uh, this was built around uh, 850 BCE. Uh, it's the Caravan Bridge. It's uh, over this river Niels, Niels uh, which was formerly in, called Smyrna in Turkey. It's slab stone single arch bridge, and it's the oldest datable bridge that's still in use in the whole world. And that's, that's why it stands out. Uh, this is a Somerset Bridge in Bermuda. Judy and I saw that. It was initially built in 1620, and it's the smallest drawbridge in the world. Um, there, <laughs> this part does not move nor does this. The whole drawbridge part was here. And today they have just a wooden plank over this opening. And if a captain comes along and needs an opening, uh, some people come along and move that. So originally these two things, uh, these two tiers rose up and I guess they don't do that anymore. Uh, this is the longest bridge span in the world. Um, it is, well, it's either 1991 or 1998 meters, depending on which source you go to. Uh, it was built in 1998. Uh, and it is longer than, th that central span is longer uh, than uh, the Verrazano 
narrow bridge, which is only about 1300 uh, meters. Uh, the Golden Gate is 1280 and the George Washington Bridge is 1067. So it's the longest central span suspension bridge in the world. Uh, and this is another view of that same bridge uh, at night. Okay. The world's busiest bridge is the George Washington Bridge. It was built in 1931. A quarter of a million vehicles cross the bridge every day. Um, and at one point, and I don't remember when, um, probably in the 40s or early 50s, they built the second uh, roadway underneath the initial roadway. So now they're two. Um, and it, depending on where you're coming from, you have a choice of roadway. Uh, in some cases, you don't. And this is looking from New York to New Jersey. Um, go up. That quarter of a million a day comes to over 10 million a year. And that's why it's the world's busiest bridge. The newest bridge, and lots of bridges being built, um, there are 27 major bridges currently under construction. 24 of those are in China. But one that's not in China is called this Kanakao 1915 bridge, which is at the Dardanelles in Turkey, and it's going to open next March. It will have the longest span in the world at, 20, at 2,023 meters. This picture was taken in January of this year, and you can see uh, the roadway's not up yet, but the but this suspension cables are. This is the steepest bridge in the world, built over Lake Nakaomi in, in Japan. It's also the third largest bridge in the world. Um, there are lots of pictures of this bridge where the roadway almost looks vertical, but I included this picture. It's steep, but it's not that steep but it's the steepest in the, in the world. Um, I'll spend about five minutes on why bridges fail. All right, due to age, there's corrosion and vibration the whole time they're uh, in use. They can be overloaded, so that shouldn't happen by design. Uh, we saw with the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, the wind can be a, a real factor. Uh, water, ice, rain, snow. Uh, so the weather can cause problems. Uh, a lot of heat can cause problems. We're going to have to deal with that more and more. Uh, earthquakes can take down bridges. Uh, collisions, either with things floating uh, in the water or with vehicles going over the bridges. Uh, they can have resonance problems. Uh, that's why uh, army troops are told not to march over bridges. They break the step that's in unison. Uh, there can be an adequate design and there can be construction errors. All of these things can lead to uh, problems for bridge health and also inadequate inspection and maintenance. Uh, if you don't keep up the bridge, uh, it can fall apart. And this uh, was a crack in a bridge that was observed and the bridge was uh, closed as a result. So good inspection is really important. Uh, this is the Honeymoon Bridge built in 1898. It's a steel arch bridge and its span is 840 feet. But in 1938, uh, the river got very high. Uh, and there was ice in it. It hit the foundations of the bridge and the flood tore the bridge down. In 1941, they built a replacement bridge and they called it the Rainbow Bridge, which was very optimistic. But what they did was they put the base of the bridge, the foundation supports here, 
uh, 28 feet higher than they had been for the bridge that was swept away. This is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. When this bridge was built in 1940, uh, it was flexible, it had a flexible roadway. And cars would go across it and the roadway would flex up and down. Uh, and some drivers would say the car in front of me would disappear. So the flexing was, I don't know, eight, 10 feet. It was open for less than four months when a 40 mile an hour wind came up and caused the center span to, uh, to go up and down and side to side. And the side to side caused the twisting and that tore the, bill, the bridge apart. A commission was set up uh, to investigate it. It had all kinds of uh, civil engineers on it. And one aerodynamicist, Theodore von Karman, and he said he was appointed to the commission to represent the wind. So after this happened, aerodynamics was then considered as an important consideration in building bridges. Uh, this is the bridge that was built to replace it. Uh, it has a lot of this truss stressing under the uh, roadway. Then there was the Mianus River Bridge, which was opened in, in 1958, collapsed in, 18, in 1983. Uh, and the analysis said there was a connecting pin fracture. So probably someplace like this. Uh, this part of the bridge fell down and uh, people were not able to stop. And so there were, I think, 13 deaths. Uh, this is the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge opened in 1936. And this one section of the upper roadway fell to the lower roadway in a 1989 earthquake. Uh, and this is the uh, Millennium Bridge in London built in 2000. It's a suspension bridge, but they did not want to uh, interfere with people walking over this pedestrian bridge. I uh, didn't want to interfere with their view of the city. So they had the suspension cables on the side. Unfortunately, when the people started walking on the bridge, the bridge moved a little bit and these crowds started walking side to side uh, and together because they were all sensing the same movement of the bridge. And that caused the bridge to sway uh, much too much. And they closed it, uh, the engineers looked at it, they had not considered such a thing in their design. And the fix was they put dampers in on these members. And that, damp and that damped the motion and the bridge was then usable. Uh, this was the I-35W part of the bridge in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And they said this was a design error. And over these 40 years, uh, the wear and tear on the bridge uh, took it down. It was essentially overloaded. Uh, this was a bridge which 65 years after it was bought, built uh, was determined to be functionally obsolete. And so they closed the bridge and they reinforced all these uh, these piers, and then they reopened it. Uh, this is the Bixby Creek Bridge uh, at the Pacific, uh, and that was <laughs> sorry, uh, and that was reinforced after uh, it decided that it couldn't work anymore. Uh, so here's the current state of American bridges. 230,000 need major repair work or should be replaced. And that's more than a third of all the bridges. 46,000 of those are structurally 
deficient. And those bridges get crossed 178 million times every day. Uh, the average bridge in this country is 44 years old. And 42% of all the bridges are at least 50 years old. Bridges today are being built to last from 75 to 100 years. And within this country, we have collapses of anywhere from 87 to 222 bridges a year. And the average comes to be 128. Uh, that's just a picture of the states. Iowa has the most deficient bridges. Uh, New York has a lot and these other states as well. All right, I'm not gonna go through this because we've run over. Uh, I have a lot more pictures of interesting bridges uh, if you'd wanna see those, but we've used up all the time. So I think I, think I should stop here and see if there's any discussion, questions, comments. You know, one of the things, yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned uh, the, uh, no, the, the, that the supports at the end and under the, and make a big difference, you know. I, I, what, I just wonder if anybody on the call knows how suspension bridge cables are tied in at the ends. And what the forces are at that at those ends? Anybody? <laughs> I'm not sure. Because uh, I mean, you've got this enormous tension going yes. into those cables, right? And right. You pull, you're pulling on dirt and rock and you know, and whatnot. Um, well, they they have to anchor them somehow to the stone. There has to be something really substantial there. Yeah. Uh, and the cables are made up of hundreds of strands. And they could split them up and, and, and anchor them all individually. I don't know for sure, but it's a good question. And I should look into that. <laughs> yeah, I, I've I'm seen it. Bridge, I'm not a bridge engineer. I, I saw that on the St. John's Bridge on Earth Day one year, they actually had a tour at the end of the, and, and it was, it's a, it's a suspension bridge, kind of like uh, the, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. And it, it, um, it was quite complex, right? The way that it was attached, but there were bolts that, that, that huge bolts that had to be rotated and then like, sort of like a jam nut. And I always yeah. picture some terrorist going in there <laughs> and unscrewing those bolts and having all the, the whole bridge fall down. Anyway. Uh, terrorists would have to be very well, well equipped right. to do that. Have to be an inside job. Yeah. yeah. Any other uh, questions from other people? I wonder well, if people recognize the bridge behind Dave's head. <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> Move over. We took that picture a while ago when we were in France and it's the Bridge of Avignon, which is a song I learned as a child, you know, Fleur Le Pont d'Avignon. I don't show it, but that bridge doesn't go anywhere. It ends in the middle of over the water. They don't use it. And it's an amazing bridge. It's been up for so long and it was thrilling to see it. And also, Dave showed you the Algonquin Bridge, and we were in Algonquin a lot in Maine, and we used to stand on the bridge just for the fun of pushing the button so we could go up and we can let a ship go underneath it. it was, a lot of the tourists did it. They counted on that, I guess, to get the bridge open. Very interesting. I have a question, Dave. Um, I was once told if you go across like the, uh, the, the Throg's Neck Bridge, at the bottom of the cables, you see there are like shields at the bottom of the cables, uh, all the cables. I was told that it was bomb protection. And do you know anything about that? I, it, it's plausible, but I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, I would 
guess that's not what it is, but it would just be a guess. It looks like a, a shroud that maybe goes up 10 or 15 feet yeah. at the bottom of the cable. Um, and I think I've seen on other bridges, other suspension bridges as well. I'm just always curious about that, but never knew anybody who knew anything about it. <laughs> uh, probably c can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> And I probably will now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would guess, depending on what the orientation is, it's the protected from ice that may form um, in the river. But uh, but I don't know. It it might be road salt. Uh, I was going to say that the biggest thing probably right at the uh, junction there is corrosion resistance and what you can't see can harm you, you know? So as those <laughs> things penetrate into the earth is, is really uh, an issue with, you know, there could be electrical conduction, there could be all kinds of uh, things going on, current, what they call that electrolysis and yeah. all kinds of things that could destroy those cables. And so, you know, uh, right now, the uh, New York, uh, New Jersey Bridge Authority has to raise the rates because they haven't made enough money over the last 40 years to replace the cables on the George Washington Bridge. That, that was their big thing. Mm -hmm. they, uh, so all that money that we've been paying to go over that bridge at $15 a, a pop uh, isn't enough for them to replace those cables, which they now say have come due mm -hmm. on the GW Bridge. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like to do that, you know, what one at a time. And, how they'll do that but I, I think one of the issues is, is is maintenance of these bridges now after they've been built yeah i would imagine uh replacing a cable would both take a bit of time and probably you have to close the bridge i, I don't know oh my god yeah if the bridge yeah. could be no they're talking about doing it in cable you know one at a time you know these strands they're gonna um, they, they could. Could you imagine if they closed the GWB? As no, you said, it's the, they can't it's, close it. The I mean, busiest just... bridge in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, then <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you run a fifth a cable, and then you take away one, mm. or, or you leave the fifth one up there while you do one at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not exactly sure where you put it. Uh, you recall I said that those cables are not uh, fixed to the towers so that the tension can run through the cable yeah. over the top of the tower. Now that, of course, puts a downward force on the tower, uh, but, but not the same force that it would have if the cables were attached. So. Um, anyway, I, I would like to see, let me, let me show you this one other picture. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, these are some of the other amazing bridges. Okay. Um, I am share screening. Share screening. Yeah, we lost it, yeah. Oh, I had it up. You had oh, it up for you, I didn't did. realize yeah. I had it up already. Okay. <laughs> Here it is. This fascinated me. Uh, it's in Yemen. It's called the Bridge of Size, and it's a footbridge. It was built out of limestone, which they took out of the local mountains um, in the 17th century. Wow. Uh, it's 8,500 feet above sea level, and uh, it goes over a gorge that's uh, 656 feet below this. Uh, they, the, the locals say, uh, that this was built to make it easy for people to get from this side to this side. Um, 
before the bridge was built, they had to go down the mountain, uh, across the valley, and up the other side of the mountain. Uh, there's also remnants of bridges below this one, uh, because one of the questions was, how did they get all the material up these mountains? You can see here's a staircase. It goes off to this side, and, and, and one that goes on this side as well. Um, this was not an easy thing to do, and they did it 400 years ago. Right. Um, Can I mention something a little more recent? You, you showed a picture of a pole bridge. The pole was laying crossways across the road. You remember that? You, you don't remember. No. <laughs> you, you showed a picture earlier. With poles, yeah. they said they weren't even finished. They were just round, but they were just laid across the bridge as a surface. I mentioned that only because when I grew up in Louisiana, we had a road like that and a bridge like that down in the country in Louisiana. You're talking so, about this one? Yeah, that one right there. That was, that was <laughs> ours was a little more modern, but not much. That <laughs> pole, pole bridge right across the bridge, that's, that was the surface. That's what we yeah. had. Well, I'm not sure what modern means in this term because I couldn't find when this was built, but it could mean anything after the Roman Empire. I don't, I'm not sure what modern ours was after that. It was the 19th century. Yeah. In the uh, in the Civil War, they called that a plank bridge because they just laid they had plank roads where they would just go and cut yeah. the trees and lay them over the swamps. And uh, apparently it was hell to take a, a cart across them because they bumped a lot, but I it was called a plank road and a plank bridge. Yeah, um, thank you, sir. Yeah, I, 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 I've i got a place on a place called Plank Road in Bethel, New York. That used to be the way from, uh, it used to be the uh, one way from Albany down to um, uh, to the cove down in, uh, in, in New York, so. Yeah. Dave, so show the winner 120. What? Show the wooden cure so because that was fascinating. It's one twenty slide one twenty nine. Yeah, that was an amazing That's bridge. A pontoon bridge. Yes. It was originally built eighteen eighty eight in Corso. Yeah. And I should have had another picture of this, but this entire thing uh, swings up against one of the sides yep. of the water, and then. When they want to cross the water, they swing the whole thing out to be across the water. And when we were there, we saw it in both conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing. This is another interesting one, the Python <laughs> Bridge. Uh, this is in uh, Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to call that. <laughs> uh, it sounds like a good name. <laughs> and this, uh, this, I don't know how to pronounce it, Ursund? Ursund, yeah. Ursund. Uh, goes from Sweden to Denmark, not to Norway, uh, built in 2000, and it is a, a bridge, uh, a lot of beam bridge. Um, this is cable stayed. And they built this island. And then the roadway goes under the water here. So it's a tunnel bridge mm. island. Island. Yeah. <laughs> the other one that I thought was interesting was this. This is, I don't know. I, I, they called it a bridge wherever I was looking. Uh, but what this does is there is a canal here in Scotland and there's a canal here. And to get from one to the other, I guess was, was either not possible or you had to take a big, big detour. So they built this thing and this swings, the boat goes onto this uh, platform here and this thing swings up and deposits the boat up here. And then the boat <laughs> goes this way 
and it still has to go through two locks to um, to get to the other canal. Amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me show you one other while I'm. I'm let's, doing... let's just do one more, David. And we want to okay. wrap up. This is the Magdenburg Water Bridge in Germany, and where they also have canals. And they decided the best way to get across this canal uh, was to build a bridge, a water bridge. I love it. Wow. Okay, I'm not going <laughs> to show you. <laughs> thank you. But but thank you for hanging with me through uh, through that much. No, that's this is uh, this is very interesting. We all learn, always learn something. Uh, I, lo I love talks where I actually learn something and. and uh, and I can actually understand it, which is good. That's that's good too. So, <laughs> that's a nice, nice job. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Bruce. So much. Everybody thank have have doing. a nice night, and uh, we'll see you next thank month. You. Yep. Yep. Sure will. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.